Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Welcome to another episode in our beautiful Ramadan series on the topic of the gates of goodness, where we discuss a different issue every night in order to get ourselves closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, both in the month of Ramadan and afterwards as well. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless your time, to accept your deeds and to forgive your sins in this holy month. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the ability, the strength, the wisdom and the faith to use our time wisely in the short amount of time that remains. We have with us today my dear brother Idris and we have with us my dear brother Abdullah. We have our dear guest Ismail and our dear uh, brother Ilyas <laughs> uh, who was sick but Alhamdulillah he's back again. So uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless them for their time and their energy. <coughs> Keep them in your dua as well as those that you don't see behind the screen. Now we spoke yesterday about a very moving topic and Alhamdulillah we got a lot of feedback from a lot of people all over the world that this was one of the best episodes, if not the best, because of the topic. Right. And so that was a walk through Jannah or a stroll through paradise. And we described some of the, you know, the beautiful things about Jannah, some of the uh, rewards, some of the descriptions, you know, all of these different things and the greatest reward of paradise. So let us just go through a small recap, inshallah ta'ala. Maybe everyone can add one thing who was here last yesterday. Um, one thing I'd add is that well, one, one thing he pointed <coughs> out is that Jannah has things in it that no one has ever seen. Mm -hmm. And some of the things that are mentioned that Allah talks about in, in, in the Quran is that mm -hmm. it uses the same word, but the thing, the likeness of the how and stuff, we don't know. Oh. If Allah says there's an apple in Jannah, okay, we just know the name is apple. We don't know how it looks. We don't know how it tastes. We don't know how it smells. No. So um, that's about it for no. me. There's a lot so more. A but it's a quality thing. Yes. A big yeah. difference, subhanAllah. Like basically, we, we, we talked about like life is like a journey at this time. Like you know, for sure we have a reward at the end. Why we uh, we should be patient to get something like you know really trust like a kind of something like really worth waiting for like Jannah. And mashallah, you described it in a very really nice and awesome way. Uh, like uh, we were really moved by like your description, mashallah. And for sure, we you uh, explained also the best thing like you know the best of the best in Jannah. And like, you know, we will see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Like you explained, like, you know, the gardens, the firdaus, and like the rivers. We, we, we got like lots of information, mashallah, last time. Alhamdulillah, Thank may you. Allah grant us the highest levels of paradise. That's nice. Akhir, yes, uh, yeah, I mean, um, just to <coughs> remind ourselves of some of the action points from yesterday. Mm -hmm. yes. um, the first one was to always make our athkar, no. um, which will plant trees for us uh, in the paradise. But also to make our 12 rawatib, or in some narrations, 10. No and which will plant, or not plant, but will build us mansions in paradise. And uh, when all of the believers enter paradise, everyone will know exactly where their place is. So they're not having to ask <laughs> or they're not having to be guided, but they just know exactly where, uh, where their place is. So just yeah. remember those uh, two action points. Absolutely. Jazakum yeah. Those are beautiful uh, recaps. And one last recap we can add to that, inshallah ta'ala, is the action item of dua, right? Inshallah. So the dua, yeah. Allahumma inni as'aluka al-jannah wa a'udhu bika min al-nar three times a day in one hadith or seven times a day according to another narration. You ask Allah, oh Allah grant me paradise and paradise will say, oh Allah this servant of yours asked for paradise so allow them to enter paradise. And then you say, oh Allah protect me from the hellfire or I seek refuge in you from the hellfire. Hellfire will make dua on your behalf and say, oh Allah this servant of yours made dua to be protected from the hellfire so protect this person from the hellfire. So this is a very simple action item along with the ones that we, uh, we recapped. To do it every morning and night is very easy and throughout the day. And the beautiful thing about this is when you stop for a few moments every day and you say, Allahumma yusaluka al-jannah, you have a few moments, maybe you're at work, maybe you're, you're busy with something, maybe, you're, maybe somebody's on the verge of committing a sin, maybe somebody's somewhere else, but you have these few moments where now you're focused on jannah. So you're keeping your eyes on the prize, mm -hmm. right? So you're always knowing where you're headed. And this is a small temporary iman boost throughout your day. So to do this constantly is a very good thing. It shows and it reflects that you know where you're headed and you're preparing for it. Because what kind of person knows where they're headed or knows where they want to go, but they're not preparing for it. It's like going to the airport and saying, I want to fly. They tell you, where do you want to fly to? You say, I don't know. Yes. They say, where's your destination? You say, I don't know. You have to know where you're headed. You have to know what kind of sustenance, what kind of provisions you need to get there. You have to know the routes to get there. You have to know the detours that might come up. You mm -hmm. have to know the kinds of friends that will help you get there and the kind of friends that will pull you away from your destination. So all of these are with inside this dua of Allahumma inni as'aluk al-jannah. Really focus on the dua <coughs> and make sure it, it becomes a habit. You know, some of the youth that came to me, they said, it's hard to start a habit. It takes a while. So they put a reminder on their phones for like 20 days, 30 days, for a whole month, every day. Their phone goes off and says, make dua for jannah. Very simple. And you can do it one time and set it for the entire month. 
So every day they were looking at it and they were saying, oh, I have to make the dua. After 30 days, 40 days, they said it became a habit. Very easy. It takes between like 21 to 30 days to you know, actually start a habit or to leave a bad habit. So this is part of the dua, the action items of parents. Sheikh, actually, like, you know, it became like so easy like these days to remind you of, like, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and like what to do and all these things. Really, like uh, unfortunately people like think like social media, like uh, technology now like is bad. No, 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 you can use it in a, in a good way. Use it very uh, good way. Really, you can oh. use it wisely. I can remind you of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, reading Quran, learning new things and all these things. You have no excuse to learn or kind of remind these days. Absolutely, that's a very, very good point. Yes. So this is in, in regards to a stroll through paradise. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mm. to grant us paradise in our viewers and everyone uh, who is <coughs> beloved to you and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to be with Rasulullah yeah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the highest sense. levels of paradise. Today inshallah ta'ala we want to talk about a very very important topic yes. and although most of the topic is about the virtues of the last 10 nights of Ramadan we want to focus specifically on the night that everyone is searching for which is Laylatul Qadr and how this night is so important more important than any other night of the year. Yes. And we want to begin by mentioning the obvious, which is that every night that you're praying Qiyam, or when people are praying Tarawih, for example, we know that if they do some certain action, their, their sins are forgiven, or it's as if they pray the mm -hmm. entire night. What do they have to do to get the reward of praying the entire night? When you go for, the, for Tarawih, when tarawih. you go to pray? And you start and finish with finish the Imam. With the imam. Nah. So you start and finish with the Imam, right? Yes. So the Prophet ﷺ told us, whoever yes. prays or whoever stands in prayer with the Imam until he finishes and leaves, until he concludes the prayer, it's recorded for this person as if they prayed the entire night. Mm -hmm. Right? So this is just, just to start off the foundation, <coughs> where if you have not taken advantage of the first 20 days of Ramadan, this is your moment. You really have no excuse after this. If you have screwed <coughs> up the last 20 days completely, and you have just messed up and you have committed so many sins and you wasted <coughs> so much time. These, this is the time. These are the nights you want to take advantage of. Yes. Because these 10 nights are the greatest nights of the year. Right? And the greatest days are the first 10 days of the year. <coughs> so these are the 10 nights in which if you really want to turn yourself around, take advantage, put in the effort for these 10 nights. You, you really have to struggle. Because if you've missed the first 20 days, you haven't done well, then these 10 nights will really define what's going to kind of set, set you up for the next year or mm -hmm. so. Until next Ramadan. So we have the hadith in which we can begin with about Laylatul Qadr. What is the main hadith that everyone references? Um, Laylatul Qadr is like um, the hadith or the ayah? The hadith about <laughs> praying <laughs> on Laylatul uh, Qadr. <coughs> man Prophet um, no. uh, mentioned that Man Qama Laylatul Qadr Imanan wa ihtisaban wafira Allahu ma taqaddam min zambih. Jazakallahu khairan. Mm -hmm. So the Prophet sallallahu told us, and this is an authentic hadith reported by Bukhari and others, whoever stands in prayer yes. on the night of Al-Qadr, <coughs> which will define inshaAllah ta'ala, in, uh, in faith, meaning with sincerity, and hoping for the reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, ihtisaban, their previous sins will be forgiven. Be forgiven. Right? Yes. All of their previous yes. sins will be forgiven. Yes. Now, what are the two main things that this person needs to be doing aside from standing in prayer on Laylatul Qadr? They need to have faith, they need to have sincerity in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So they're not doing this to show off. Yes. A lot of times people will go to the masjid because their family is going, because their friend is going, because their spouse is going. You need to make sure you're doing this purely for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the most important night of the year. This will erase your sins and this will define many things for you. And the second part is ihtisaban. Mm -hmm. Hoping for a reward, hoping for the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Well, Sheikh, I know some people like they, they like, they work so hard for years, like for four or five years, um, like in a row, to get like Laylatul Qadr, like, you know, to hit Laylatul Qadr, to get it, like, you know, to get rewarded from Laylatul Qadr. Like, they work like very hard for four or five, like, years in a row, it, like, just like very hard, especially the last 10 days, like, to, to get rewarded from Laylatul Qadr. Yeah, subhanAllah. And some people, they strive more than others. Mm -hmm. and that's, the, that's the thing. We need to really put in the effort. So Iman and Muhtisaban, your, your Iman will be <coughs> reflected through how much effort you put in. Mashallah. This is what will define how much Iman you had in Allah that you wanted to stand on this night. And wallahi, there is no greater loss than missing out on Laylatul Qadr, missing out on these last 10 nights. There is no greater loss. There is no greater deprivation. So this person, has, uh, this person is praying Ihtisaban. They're hoping for the reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What, what more can we say about Ihtisaban? Yeah, I mean... Um I mean, because one of the reasons why we do any act of ibadah is out of love of Allah, obviously, and out of fear as well. So expecting a reward is really comes from that hope that we're supposed to have as well. And we mentioned before, like Ibn al-Qayyim said that yeah. ibadah is like a bird, you know, love, hope, and uh, fear. Yeah. So the ihtisab is like having that hope that Allah is going to, to reward us because 
praying the last 10 nights, we know in ma various masajid, the, the tarawih, and then after tarawih, maybe just before fajr, they have the tahajjud. Uh, have the tahajjud. So it's, it's long. Yeah. It's, it's long. Some yeah. masajid, yeah, they, they pray very, very long. So it's that. It's a really about the last 10 nights of Ramadan is like a culmination of what is, it's all leading up to this point. Mm -hmm. So the standing of uh, uh, Laylatul Qadr, we want to seek it out. We don't just want to pick you know, one night, we just want to seek it out, inshallah. And it's really having that, that hope and, you know, and wanting that reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Absolutely. So this is a very beautiful, actually, uh, comprehensive way to talk about Ahti Saban. So they're hoping for the reward from Allah. Now, today, inshallah ta'ala, for those who are uh, tuning in, we're going to be discussing the people who want to take advantage of the last 10 nights, but they're busy with work, and they cannot leave work. They absolutely cannot. We're going to talk about the people who are busy, maybe uh, mothers who have children, they're very busy with their kids. Mm -hmm. We're going to talk about people, the sisters who aren't able to pray in the last 10 nights. We're going to talk about how to take advantage, even if it's for a few of the nights, uh, and the best way to utilize every night consistently. Inshallah. Because the way I like to think about it, is that the first 20 days of Ramadan prepare us for the last 10. Yes. The first 20 nights are preparing us for the last 10 in order to find Laylatul Qadr. And we will talk today, inshallah ta'ala, about this issue of when is Laylatul Qadr and why is there a difference of opinion and when is the likeliest uh, you know, conclusion to this question. And some of the signs as well. So, Iman and Wahtisab. And you're praying, hoping that Allah will forgive your previous sins, all of your previous sins, but hoping in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to also guide you to always continue with this kind of ibadah, mm -hmm. right? You're hoping for the rest of the year to be this good, this great connection to mm -hmm. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is the primary hadith that we usually start with. And uh, Ubad ibn Samit radiallahu anhu, he said, this is basically somebody that was given the permission and the honor to be able to pray uh, on Laytul Qadr or during the last 10 nights. And then not everyone gets this blessing because some people, they committed some atrocity, something so terrible, or they have so much arrogance or they have so much uh, procrastination that they deprive themselves of it. They were caused to be deprived of standing on the most sacred night of the year. The second issue is that we know which scripture was revealed on Laytul Qadr? The Quran. The Quran. The Quran. Quran. Absolutely. Yeah. What is the proof of that? From the Quran. From the Quran also, yes. What is the proof of that? Inna anzalnahu fi Laylatul Qadr. Is there another proof for it? From the Quran. Shahru Ramadan al ladhi unzila fi the Quran is in general in Ramadan. And this is, this is accurate. But also on Laytul Qadr. Surah Dukhan? Yes. Layla Mubarak, a blessed night. Layla Mubarak. We have revealed it on a night that is blessed. Right? So the Quran was revealed on a blessed night. Now, we know that the Quran was revealed on a blessed night. We know that the Quran, this meant, by the way, that the Quran wasn't revealed completely like to, uh, to the Prophet. Mm -hmm. yeah. Rather, the revelation was brought down from Allah al Mahfud, mm -hmm. from the tablet where everything is written yes. with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the angels, to this dunya meeting. So it would be uh, decreed and revealed to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So the Quran, the most powerful thing that we have right now, the most powerful <coughs> mu'ajiz, the miracle of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the actual uncreated speech of Allah. These are the words of Allah. This is one of the most powerful things in the world. We had an entire episode about the Quran, right? Mm -hmm. So the Quran, with all of its blessings and virtues and cures and guidance and light, all of these things, was revealed on Laylatul Qadr. Further giving emphasis to Laylatul Qadr and to the Quran. And so Laylatul Qadr was given the honor through the revelation of the Quran. Mm -hmm. So we know that the Quran was revealed on this night. There is no greater night than it. The third thing is that we know that on this night something extremely special happens. Which is that the decree, the qadr for the next year is set in this night. It's brought down from al al mahfuz to the angels. Meaning Allah now commands them and reveals to the angels what they need to do for the next year or so. Right? فِيهَا يُفْرَقُ كُلُّ أَمْرٍ حَكِيمٍ And so on this night, the affairs of that year will be revealed to the angels. So what happens now? Who will live? Who will die? The provisions that you will have, the sustenance that you will have, the people that will be raised in honor, the people that will be humiliated, the people that might go through strife or plague or sickness or war, all of these things, all of these things are revealed to the angels on Laylatul Qadr. Everything that will happen to all of us in the next year or so, from Laylatul Qadr to Laylatul Qadr, will be revealed to the angels on this night. And so this night is one of the most important nights. And Allah already knows what's going to happen. It's already written. Rather, this was just a means of revelation to the angels to give them the command. Act upon these, uh, this decree, this ordainment. So now, if this is the night when everything is shown, what will happen? Why would we not take advantage of it, correct? This is the sure. most important night. You want to be standing there praying to Allah on the night that the provisions are being 
uh, decreed, decreed and, yes. and sent down. You yes. want to be there on the night that Allah is revealing who is going to be forgiven, on the night that Allah is going to be saving people from the hellfire, the people of Jannah are going to be giving glad tidings of Jannah. So we want to be standing there praying or worshipping Allah on this night. What yeah, advice can we give to someone about and this and issue of the decree? When, the you, when you read um, Surah Al-Qadr, actually, the description of the night itself, <coughs> that it's more than 1,000... You're, you're yeah. jumping ahead. Yeah, we're so going to get to that, inshallah. So this, the, the description of the night and what actually, the blessings of this night, the uh, mankind, you know, uh, the, the guidance of mankind being, you know, revealed in this, uh, on, the, on this particular night, it's a very, you know, yeah. good thing that people should understand. Oh. Because if, you know, like you said, that's why uh, the, the, we always talk about the last 10 days because we don't know specifically which one is the night, you know. So people should have to make use of the 10 days, you know. The, you know, you pray in a row. That's why, like people who have to go to Iqtikaf now, they are going, you yeah. know, stay in the mosque and yeah. pray, praying, reading Quran because <coughs> you don't want to miss this particular yeah. night, you know. Inshallah, yes. definitely. So we'll get to that, inshallah. Yeah. You're jumping out, yeah. yeah. mashallah. Yeah. So there's so much to say about Laylatul yeah. Qadr that we know that there's so many virtues and benefits of it, and that's why people seek in all ten nights, like you said, now just one night. So Laylatul Qadr, the decree is, is come down, and now everything that's written, everything that will happen to you is there. You want to be standing doing something good on this night. You want to be worshipping Allah. You don't want to be sleeping on this night or even well, committing sins in these last 10 nights and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is revealing your fate to the angels. This is one of the biggest types of you know, humiliation and disgrace. Shaykh Allah, I know some people who, who start Ramadan very well. Very well. They're like the beginning of the Ramadan, like those nice thawb, like reading the Quran, going to the masjid, like you know, the first surah and all these things. And at the end, unfortunately, like you know, they think that okay, this Ramadan is ending, blah blah blah, let's go back to our normal life. If they know really uh, the value, the importance of this night, they will never leave it. No, and so they let's move on to it. the value now. So the value, as you mentioned, uh, is mentioned in Surah Al Qadr, mm -hmm. right? Laylatul mm Qadr -hmm. khayrum min al this night of Qadr or power or decree is greater than a thousand months. Mm -hmm. Wallahi, this <coughs> verse alone is just, there's so much to say about it. It's greater than a thousand months of worship. That's 83 years in like four or five yeah, months, right? Yeah. So a thousand, a thousand months of worship. It's a bonus beyond bonuses. This is something you cannot miss out on. If you miss this out intentionally or somehow you're deprived of it, you have lost something great. A thousand months, imagine doing any act of worship in these ten nights and making, you know, making sure that you caught Laylatul Qadr. Your, your act of worship is multiplied. It's multiplied. It's as if you were doing it on a night in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the worship of is worth more than a thousand months. A thousand months of worship. So how could we miss out on something that's a thousand months of worship? Um, also, uh, just to bring up the point, uh, like veneration, the, you know, let the color, the word itself it means, vener you know, veneration. Uh, why veneration? Because of, of the Quran being real. No. But one of the uh, mafasirin also talked about how qadr means Constricted, yeah. And why it's constricted? Because the, the, this night is the so many angels descend. Yes. The earth feels constricted. Mm. Just to give you the the idea, the gravity of the situation, mm. the, how enormous yeah. this night really is. And Subhanallah, yeah. there's actually a hadith that indicates that mm. on this night there are more angels in the dunya, like in our so heaven, many than any yeah. other night of the year okay. or any other day of the year. So Laylatul Qadr is greater than a thousand months of worship. We hear this over and over and over. We hear this every year. Yes. And we hear it multiple times. But now it's here. Now we're in the last 10 nights. This is the time to take advantage. Yes. This is the time to really you know, get our act together. Take things seriously. So let's, say, let's look at how Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa acted in these 10 nights. Just very briefly. The first thing is that we know when the first 10 nights, w when the last 10 nights would start, Aisha radiallahu anha, uh, what did she say the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would do? He would pray in the night and he would tie his belt. So he would tie in yeah. his belt, meaning like mm -hmm. there, it has two meanings. One of yeah. them is that he would now take things seriously. Yeah. He's going to work hard. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa he took the entire year seriously. He took the first 20 days of Ramadan very seriously, meaning in, in acts of worship. And yet in the last 10 nights, he strived even more than any other night. In the last 10 nights, he took advantage more than any other night. And this is Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And she also mentioned in the hadith that he would wake up his family. Yeah. And this brings us to the next point, which is very interesting. Aisha radiallahu anha would mention how Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to wake up his wives for witr in the last part of the night during the entire year. But during the last 10 nights of Ramadan, he would be persistent when waking them up. Like, no, now you really mm -hmm. got to get up. Mm -hmm. This is like more emphasis. Very important. You cannot miss this night. Which reminds us and reminds our viewers, make sure that you are motivating your family. You're also <coughs> encouraging your family to take advantage. So don't only focus on yourself with the ibadat. Try to seclude yourself from social gatherings and wasteful things. But try to motivate your family to take advantage of the time. Yes. 
because your family is a part of you and you want them to also benefit from this reward. The other thing is that Aisha radiallahu anha said in an authentic hadith, she said, I never saw Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam reciting the entire Quran in one night or praying the entire night consistently, meaning without sleeping at all. Entire night until the morning or fasting an entire month completely except in Ramadan. So he would recite the Quran in its entirety. He would pray all night until morning. And he would uh, fast the entire month consecutively. And so there, the only other month we know of that he might have fasted some years is the month of Sha'bah. Sha some years he would connect it to Ramadan. So that's in some years. Whereas for Ramadan, he did this consistently where he prayed all night and he read the Quran in its entirety every night. Sallallahu alayhi wa And some people, subhanAllah, they're like, yeah, I'm going to read a couple ayat and then they, you know, they're not even able to do that. It goes back to how much you really want it. Mm -hmm. Because Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa set a very beautiful example and a high standard. Now, are we expected, do we have to pray the entire night? Do we have to read the entire Qur'an in one night? No. No, this is the standard of Rasulullah sallallahu <coughs> Some of the Sahaba were able to do that. Uthman used to recite, radiallahu anhu, the Qur'an every night in Ramadan. <laughs> Other scholars later on, some of the tabi'een and those after them, they recite the Qur'an uh, twice, once in the day, once in the night, like Imam Shafi rahimullah. So subhanAllah, you really want to set your standard high and work for it. But ultimately, you want to do something that's consistent through all ten nights. You want to distribute it evenly through during these nights so that you're benefiting from every night so that you're going to hit your target. You will hit your target inshallah ta'ala. The other thing is that we know that dua is likely to be accepted in certain times of the year, certain times of the day, certain virtuous moments, right? Mm -hmm. And there's no greater time than in the month of Ramadan and no greater time in Ramadan than the last 10 nights and no greater time in the last 10 nights than Layat al-Qadr. So we want to increase in our dua during these 10 nights because your dua is very likely to be accepted. Of course, we mentioned the etiquette of du'a. We should include these things when we make du'a. But your du'a is right there. Allah is right there descending to the first heaven and yeah. asking, right? Allah is asking, who will ask me so that I will give them? Who will seek forgiveness so that I will forgive them? Who will pray to me so that I can accept their prayers? So this is something that's very easy to do. Just try to set up a schedule to make it consistent, inshallah ta'ala. Now, let us talk about the, the issue that for a lot of people is controversial. When is Laylatul Qadr? This is something that people talk about. They say, it's, it could be any night, they could say it's the last 10 nights, some people say it's the 27th, some people say it's only the odd nights. So what we're going to do inshallah ta'ala is we're going to go to our Ramadan report and then when we come back we'll talk about this issue and try to figure out when is Laylatul Qadr, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. Stick around, we'll be right back. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Canada is witnessing the fast growth of Islam in the country with Muslims gaining more influence throughout Canadian society. Due to effective da'wah work that has been undertaken by Muslim scholars and Islamic organizations in Canada, Muslims have begun to enjoy fundamental rights for the freedom of worship and practicing their religion. Although there are still some restrictions against the practice of Islam in Canada, there are remarkable developments today and Muslims are accorded protection to practice Islam without fear or threat. The majority of Muslims in Canada are migrants who have come from different parts of the world to live, study or work in Canada. The leading Islamic society that's charged with overseeing the affairs of Muslims in Canada closely follows Saudi Arabia with regards to the observation of the holy month of Ramadan. Upon the announcement of the sighting of the crescent moon of Ramadan and the commencement of this glorious month, Muslims in Canada convene at the various mosques across the country to perform the Tarawiyah prayer. Canadian Muslims maintain the practice of breaking the fast with dates and milk and having their suhoor as a part of the sunnah of the Prophet, peace be upon him. During this month of worship, mercy and repentance, Canadian Muslims spend their wealth and organize large iftar meals that they break their fast together in the spirit of love and harmony. And the mosques are filled with worshippers performing a variety of religious activities, including the memorization of the Holy Quran and the Hadith and other religious studies. One of the largest mosques in the country is the Sunatu Nabawi Mosque in the Canadian city of Montreal. In the mosque, the glorious Quran is read on a daily basis for the entire month of Ramadan. Muslims in Canada 
observe the Laylatul Qadr on the 27th night of Ramadan. The Eid in Canada is widely observed by thousands of Muslims across the country. During Eid, Muslims pray together in large congregations with their families and friends. It is a day of forgiveness and good wishes to all Muslims across the country. May Allah to continue to bless and spread Islam in Canada. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back from the beautiful Ramadan report. May Allah bless our brothers and sisters around the world. May Allah accept from us and grant victory to all of those who are oppressed. And may Allah forgive our, uh, our sins in this blessed month. We were talking before the, the report about something very important, mm -hmm. right? Yes. We were talking about the date of Laylatul Qadr. When is Laylatul Qadr? When? This is a question a lot of people ask. And they're always trying to find it. Mm -hmm. And so there are different opinions about this. What are some of the common opinions that we know of? or maybe some of the opinions you guys follow before we get into the discussion. We can start here. For me, I, the one I was taught and learned from my, my teachers and my shiokh was, we don't, nobody knows, so just pick the, the last 10 nights and go from there. So any of the last 10 nights? Um, the odd nights, like the 21st, the mm. 23rd, 4th, Of the 7th. last 10? Yeah, mm. the last 10. So the odd so. nights of the last 10? Yeah, yeah the, the same thing, you know, I, even in my country, we do the same thing, like <coughs> we take the 27th <coughs> night, you know. 27th? Uh, yes, yes. Okay. Like many people do. No. Everyone's uh, mentioned everything. <laughs> <laughs> What's that Me? Um, I was always taught it could be any night in the last 10. Okay. That's what, that's what I was always, always Any night meant. in the last 10. Okay. But one thing yeah. I wanted to say yeah. <laughs> is that how do we calculate the last 10 nights? Because we're not sure that's if That's what Ramadan we're going to get into. Okay. We're going to get you brought that <laughs> exactly. up. And this is something people really have to know. Yeah. Because, you know, once you learn this, you don't need to, people don't need to go into it again and again and again. But some people, maybe some of our viewers or some people who might listen later, maybe this is the first time they'll hear some of these mm -hmm. ahadith and they're all authentic. So this is the first time they hear it. But once you know about this issue, every Ramadan you should stick with you know, the issue, stick with the conclusion, inshallah ta'ala. So the first is that the knowledge of Laylatul Qadr, it's not clear, right? It mm -hmm. was clear to Rasulullah and it's then good. it was taken away. It was taken away. Wasn't there an incident? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, uh, basically he said, I came out to tell you when Laylatul Qadr was. He came to the Sahaba. He was going to tell them the night, the, the actual day of Laylatul Qadr. So we would have known. But then he said, and so and so and so and so were arguing. Two people were arguing. They were basically like fighting on Laylatul Qadr or on uh, the last nights of Ramadan. Mm -hmm. So he said, they were arguing. So the knowledge of Laylatul Qadr was taken away from me. And perhaps mm -hmm. this is better for you. So seek mm -hmm. it, look for it mm -hmm. on the ninth and the seventh and the fifth. And this is reported by Bukhari. So now we have the first hadith. So he said, seek it, meaning in the last 10 nights of the 9th and the 7th and the 5th, of the last 10 nights, 29th, 27th, 25th. Mm -hmm. We have another hadith report by Bukhari. The Prophet wasallam said, seek Laylatul Qadr in the last 10 nights of Ramadan. Mm -hmm. This is also authentic. Mm -hmm. We have another hadith in which the Prophet wasallam said, also reported by Bukhari, he said, seek Laylatul Qadr in the odd, num odd number mm -hmm. nights of the last 10 nights. Mm -hmm. And then we have this issue. Al-Bukhari reports that the Prophet wasallam said, Seek it in the last ten nights of Ramadan when there are nine left and when there are seven left and when there are five left. Hmm. So now the wording here is different, right? Yes. What's different about this one? It's like the so beginning. Yeah, nine is left. Ten. How many remain? Yeah. remain days. Yeah. Now do we know how long Ramadan is in advance? No. No. Um, no. Unless somebody is going by calculations, they usually don't know. Mm -hmm. So we don't really know if it's 29 or 30 days. Right. <coughs> right? So we don't know if the 20th is the first of the last nine or the 21st is the first of the last nine. Allah knows best. Mm -hmm. But we know that in this, in this uh, hadith, it's mentioned how many are left. Nine left, seven left, five left. So Ibn Taymiyyah, rahimullah, and other scholars, they mention that this indicates that you don't even know which are the odd nights and which are not. Mm -hmm. Basically because you don't know uh, when it starts the last 10 nights. Hmm. So this is one opinion, that it could start on the 20th, it could start on the 21st. Depending on whether they're 29 or 30 days. Hmm. So we have another hadith reported by Imam Muslim in which the Prophet ﷺ said, Seek it in the last 10 nights. And if, if any of you are weak or unable to do that in the last 10 nights, then let him not miss the last 7. So he's giving us an indication that it's in the last 7 of these last 10 nights. As with the other hadith as well. Right, so the last nine, or the last, uh, the fifth, or the seventh. So we know now it's one of these last seven nights of Ramadan, from the twenty-third onward, or twenty-second to the twenty-ninth. Allah knows best. Now we always, we I don't know about some of where you guys live, but where I live, for example, in the United States, and this is very common around the world, on the twenty-seventh night, 
it's packed mm, it's more packed. than any other yeah. night, yes. right? Yeah. Yeah. Is this how it is in your, where yes. you pray as well? Yeah. Everywhere. This is everywhere. Yeah. And there's a reason for this. So although we believe, and this is going to be the basically the conclusion, we believe that Laylatul Qadr, according to the correct opinion, the majority opinion, we don't know the exact date of it. It could be in any of the last 10 nights. And more likely, the wording matters here, more likely it's in, in the last seven of the last 10 nights, and more likely it's in the odd nights of the last seven, and more likely it's on the 27th night. Mm -hmm. But Allah knows best. And we will mention why this might not be absolutely true. It might not be clear to us. So the Prophet so, so, so here we, we get the importance of, you know, uh, one, you know, intensifying their worship during the last 10 days, you know, because you don't want to miss anything there. You don't want to miss, you know, when I, you don't know. Because sometimes when I was young, actually, when I miss like one day, one night of the, the last 10 days, and I feel like maybe the, the night has gone. So to avoid all these people have to make sure that they worship, you know, through these last 10 days, you know. Right, I think sure. it makes sense. Yeah. So the Prophet Sallallahu said, there's an authentic hadith reported by Imam Ahmad and Abu Dawood and others. He said, Laylatul Qadr is the night of the 27th. There's an authentic hadith. In another narration, it was mentioned that Ubay ibn Ka'ab radiallahu anhu mm -hmm. said that it is Laylatul Qadr without saying insha'Allah, meaning that he was absolutely sure. Mm -hmm. And in many other hadith, it was indicated that this is Laylatul Qadr 27th. Ibn Abbas swore by this as well. However, we have authentic hadith, sahih a hadith, in which the Sahaba said in other years that it was the 25th and sometimes the 23rd. Mm -hmm. So now we have all these mm -hmm. authentic hadith indicating that some of the years is 27th, some of the years is 25th, some 23rd. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so Imam al nawi rahmanullah said, the only way we can reconcile between all of these authentic hadith is to believe or to hope that mm -hmm. it is possible that Laylatul Qadr changes every year in the last 10 nights. Yes. It could be any of the last 10 nights every year. And that's why some years the Sahaba said it was 27, some years it was 25th. So this is the only way to really reconcile between them. Allah knows best. So what we do here is that we believe that Allah concealed the knowledge as the Prophet told us. He said, perhaps it is better for you, right? Mm -hmm. So Allah concealed the knowledge of Laylatul Qadr in order for us to take advantage of all the last 10 nights. Allah mm -hmm. subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to pray in all last 10 nights, take it seriously. Because what usually happens is a lot of people will come to the masjid on the 27th. Mm -hmm. MashaAllah, this is a good thing. It's jam-packed. But the problem is they miss the other nights as well. And some, mm -hmm. you don't know if you actually prayed on 28th or the 26th. It could have been an even night. Mm -hmm. So what we want to do, inshallah, <coughs> is to take advantage of all of the last 10 nights. And if somebody is weak or unable or something happens, as the Prophet ﷺ said, mm -hmm. at least take advantage of the last 7 nights. At least take advantage of the last 7 nights. And so we believe that it could change every year and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. And there's other things in which Allah did not give us a, a direct date for or an example of or something concise like the 99 names of Allah. Those are not clearly known to us. Mm. But we know that whoever memorized them and acts upon them will enter Jannah. But we don't have a list of the exact 99 names. We don't. Those are just compiled by scholars over the years. So there's some things that the knowledge is concealed because Allah wants us to put in more effort, strive more consistently. So again, we want to strive in the last 10 nights, evenly, do something good every single night. And maybe you want to emphasize in the last seven and emphasize in the odd nights and emphasize in Laylatul Qadr, if it is Laylatul Qadr, on any of these uh, odd nights. But we want to ultimately take advantage of every night, even if it's for half an hour, an hour. Because if you're standing on that night and you pray on that night, then perhaps Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept you as from those whom He said, مَنْ قَامَ لَيْلَةٌ قَدْرِ إِيمَانًا وَاحْتِسَابًا غُفِرَ لَهُ مَا تَقَدَّمْ مِنْ ذَلِكَ Whoever stands on Laylatul Qadr in faith, sincerity, and hoping for the reward. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant yeah, us yeah, yeah. Uh, correct knowledge and to cr uh, grant us correct implementation and to guide us to what's best and to allow us to take advantage of all last 10 nights. Mm -hmm. Now subhanAllah, before we get into <coughs> the signs of Laylatul Qadr because we're getting near the end, we want to ask this question or bring up this point. It is already tonight here in Egypt, it is the 20th of Ramadan, right? Mm -hmm. It's the 20th of Ramadan. The time passed by so quickly. Yes. 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 SubhanAllah, we had just started Ramadan as if it were a few days ago. Mm. And the time just flies by. And this is how it's going to be. Before we know it, it's going to be Eid. But before you know it, with a bigger <coughs> picture, your life will come to an end. This is how life is in general. So with a blink of an eye, Ramadan is gone. With another blink of the eye, your life is gone. Right? We might not make it till next Ramadan. I have a friend that passed away, may Allah have mercy on him, a few days ago. In the month of Ramadan. We have people who passed away in the first 10 days. We have people who passed away before Ramadan began. And we have people, perhaps any of us, Allah knows best, we might not make it to the 27th. We might not make it to the 25th or the 29th. Mm -hmm. We might not make it to Eid. We might not make it till next Ramadan. So take advantage of these 10 nights like no other uh, nights of the year. 
And so we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us that strength. What are some signs, authentic signs of Laylatul Qadr? Because this is something people like to ask about. So we'll mention three authentic ones. What are some that you guys know of? Authentic signs describing Laylatul Qadr. I heard this. Yeah, go ahead. The, the, the one that I, there's three, but I know one of them is the sun will rise with <coughs> a, a clear rays. Mm -hmm. Clear rays, okay. Yes. That's true. So the sun, sun will rise without very, uh, mm -hmm. basically it'll be very weak. You'll be able to look at yes. it. Yes. No. Yes. Yeah. Like the clear, like, uh, clear like sky. And mm -hmm. I heard that for like, maybe this is what I don't know, but uh, dogs are not like barking. No. I heard that also, like uh, the last one, so quiet and like breezy. Yeah. Something so the one about the dogs, I'm not sure if it's authentic or not. Yeah, I, I, I heard this a lot over the years. Mm -hmm. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. But we know that it will be a peaceful night, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. Salam hiya hatta maqla'at fajr. So peace as the, at the end of Layl Surah Al Qadr. <coughs> uh, it is until the morning, basically, mm -hmm. until the sun rises. This night ends then. What are some other signs that we know of? Any? So the one that was mentioned is about the sun, right? This yes. one was mentioned by a lot of the Sahaba. Mm -hmm. So one of them even said that on that year that they knew when it was Laylatul Qadr, he said when the sun rose on the following morning, it had no visible rays. We were able to look at it. Mm -hmm. And subhanAllah, something that somebody was doing last year um, or a few years ago, they were collecting pictures from all over the world, yes. right? And they were saying, oh, look over here, the sun. And it, some of the nights, the odd nights, that, yeah, it really <laughs> looked like it could be Laylatul Qadr. Allah knows best. The only thing is, every sunrise looked different, and we mm. really don't know ultimately when Laylatul Qadr is. Mm. And by then, by the time the sun rises, it's too late, mm. right? Because mm. now the, the night is gone. Yes. The second sign that we know of for sure is that the Prophet wasallam said, oh. Laylatul Qadr is a pleasant night, neither hot nor cold, and the following day the sun rises red and weak. So it's like the temperature is, is mm. like perfect, mm. it's neither hot nor cold. And like a, as you said, it's like a perfect breeze or perfect uh, atmosphere or climate. Mm -hmm. And the following day, the sun <coughs> will rise very uh, weak. And you can see it clearly. Mm -hmm. The third sign that's authentic that we know of for sure is the Prophet wasallam said, this is a report by Tabarani. He said, Laylatul Qadr is a bright night, neither hot nor cold, in which no meteors are seen. No meteors mm -hmm. are seen. So we won't mm -hmm. see any meteors on that day. This was defined in different ways. What, what is one description of this that the scholars said? The meteors. Or the following stars. Yeah. Is that something of the, where the jinn are being uh, repelled back from? Right. Trying to listen? Because they're shackled. Yeah. Yes. So there's, that's why people won't see this, basically. They're already shackled. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so this is one way to describe <coughs> Laylatul Qadr and Allah knows best. Ultimately, it's not good for us to try to just look at the signs and say, oh, I caught it for sure. Because if you think you caught Laylatul Qadr and you miss out on the next five nights and you miss Laylatul Qadr for real, like yeah. you're, you're going to mm -hmm. have some regrets. And we don't want to fall into that situation. Mm -hmm. But these are just some signs people like to ask about. Here's the question that people will ask uh, regarding the last 10 nights. Some people want to use all last 10 nights to pray in the masjid, right? They want to stay in the masjid, they don't want to leave, they want to seclude themselves. This is known as what? Atikaf. Atikaf, right? So what are some things we can mention to our viewers that will benefit them regarding Atikaf? The first is that we know that the Prophet ﷺ, he would start Atikaf uh, either in one opinion after Fajr, right? Mm. Uh, on the 20th day before uh, the 21st night, after Fajr or right before the sun uh, sets, right? Mm. So we have all of these different examples. We're told that we have a caller on the line, our dear brother Muhammad from Egypt. You're on the line, go ahead. Assalamu alaikum, brother. Wa alaikum as wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Uh, brother, uh, I really like you, so. Does that Inshallah, uh, it's wonderful. Um, I, I just uh, want to say something about uh, Laylatul Qadr, uh, the right of the great value. Uh, just for me and for the viewers and all Muslims around the world, uh, please do not waste this opportunity. Uh, you may not live for the next year. You may not live to witness such a good night and day. So it's for me first and for all the viewers around the world. Um, and, and just make dua for all of us, for all, for all, for all the Muslims around the world, uh, do persecuted Muslims in Burma, in Palestine, uh, in Syria, in Iraq, every, everywhere. So just utilize this opportunity. Uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from us all, inshallah. 
Ameen. Ameen. Jazakallah khairan, Akhi Muhammad from Egypt. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from the believers all over the world. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the ability to stand on Laylatul Qadr and to be of those who are accepted. We always make the dua. Allahumma balighna Laylatul Qadr uh, and Allahumma ja'alna fiha min al-maqbooleen. Allah make us of those who are accepted on that night. Jazakallah khairan for the reminder, Akhi Muhammad. So i'tikaf, you can start on the 21st night. Right, you seclude yourself in the masjid. Some people stay busy with worship the entire time. Some things are permissible to talk to people to do any kind of mubah action. Intimacy is not allowed, of course, during atikaf. This is forbidden in the Quran. And the person should not leave the masjid unless there's a need for it. Now here's a question that will come up. If somebody is unable to perform, perform atikaf for all 10 nights, what if they're only able to for two nights? What if they have work or they're unable to pray during the other nights? What can they do? Should they not do atikaf at all? They should do atikaf for as long as they can. As long as they can. For it, it maybe an hour. Even if it's an hour. I mean, they could uh, at least just dedicate some time to no. atikaf. Doesn't need to be the last ten days because some people they think that if I can't do the last ten days or the whole ten days of atikaf, I'm not going to do atikaf. Exactly. Whereas uh, Ibn Uthaymin Rahimullah said that you should do atikaf even if it's one hour, even if it's half an hour. Yes. There should be some time where. Uh, you do do uh, your etikaf. No. So even the scholars of the past, from uh, the time of the Tabi'een and the Sahaba, they held the opinion that you can do etikaf for as much as you can. Exactly. Right? Mm -hmm. So fear Allah as much as you can. Whatever you're able to do, try to do it. But don't make it like an all or nothing kind of thing. Like no. I'm going to do 10 nights or I'm not going to do etikaf yeah, exactly. at all. If you can do one night, it's better than nothing. And perhaps that night, Allah Alam, might have been Layatul Qadr. Yeah. The, the next thing we want to mention is, are women allowed to do etikaf in the masjid? Yes. Absolutely. Yes. And the Sahabiyat were known to do this, and the wives of the Prophet ﷺ were known to do this after he passed away. ﷺ. It is allowed for women to perform atikaf in their masajid. Another thing is that we know that there's a reward for atikaf, but most of what we know about it is uh, in, in the unseen, right? We mm -hmm. don't really know the details of the reward for atikaf. But there are some ahadith, some which the authenticity is disputed, some which are da'if, but you can use them for motivation. The one that is da'if, that we can mention inshallah ta'ala, is in which the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa says that this person is refraining from sins during this atikaf. He will be given a reward like that of the one who does all kinds of good deeds. So it's not limited, it's, it's open. And this reported by Ibn Majah, some scholars say it's da'if. As for the one that's sahih or hasan according to uh, Al-Haythami, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, Whoever observes i'tikaf for one day, seeking thereby the face of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, sincerely for the sake of Allah, Allah will place between this person and the hellfire three ditches that are wider than the distance of the east and the west. And this is an authentic hadith according to some scholars. Now we have other hadith like about fasting where there's 70 years distance or a ditch of 70 years between you and the hellfire. Mm -hmm. And this is similar in that one night of i'tikaf does this for you. One night of i'tikaf. So you cannot imagine all 10 nights. Mm -hmm. And the reward ultimately is that you know that this is the last 10 nights. One of them is Laylatul Qadr. There is nothing greater than it. There is nothing greater than it. And you're following the sunnah of the Prophet Wasallam. You're cutting yourself off from worldly things for these 10 nights from your comfort of your home and your bed and your routine and maybe even electronics for some people. So they're really focused now. Right, they're really focused on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And of course, some people, they, they bring their electronics with them, which is fine, inshallah. <laughs> yeah. It depends on the, what the person is using it for. Now, a question that might come up is, how do we observe atikaf in different places around the world? Because in some places, people are not even allowed to perform atikaf, right? Yeah. Like yeah. in China, for example, this year, yeah, a lot of Muslims yeah. are not allowed to fast. They're yeah. being forced to eat. And this is, this is a disgrace to humanity. Yeah. This is an attack on Islam, an attack on religion. So they're not allowed to fast, they're not allowed to... Uh, you know, eat and uh, have suhoor and night. They're, they're forced to do all of these things and they're forcing them. They're actually physically abusing them. In some places, you know, brothers cannot have beards and sisters cannot wear their hijab. They're banning them. And so different places around the world have different circumstances. If someone is unable to perform atikaf in the masjid due to political reasons, like a corrupt government, for example, mm -hmm. or they have to register with some government, like some silly, you know, corrupt yeah. places or illegitimate rulers, what can we say to the people who want to perform atikaf but they don't want to harm themselves? Because you don't, you're not supposed to put yourself in a situation of harm. So what, what advice can we give them, at the very least, to take advantage of this? I think um, one of the key points, like we said before, itikaf can be half an hour. You know, so if they are allowed to go to the masajid, the minute they're there, they should at least say, maybe for 10 minutes, this will be my itikaf. Okay. You know, so I think that's a good way, yes. because it's very difficult for uh, some Muslims, as we said, to do etikaf because they're accused of, you know, plotting or they're accused yes. of secret, uh, right. secret meetings, secret gatherings, and all these kind of things. Uh, the second point I would say is that to understand that Allah also rewards you for it because if your intention was 
exactly. really that strong. Allah will reward you for it even if you don't get this, to do this it. This is the primary point because some of the Sahaba were unable to go and help the Muslims in some of the Ghazawat, some of the battles. But the Prophet وسلم, told the companions who were with him, he said, not, not a single valley that you cross or a hill or anything that you walk across, except that some of your brothers who are back there still, they're receiving the same reward because they were unable to come, but they really wanted to. They had the intention. Right? Mm. So it goes back to your intention. If you really try to perform itikaf and you're unable to for some reason, maybe because of a war region or because of political reasons or you're going to get harmed for it or it's going to bring your family harm, whatever it may be, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows what you're able to do. He knows your situation. Mm. Another possibility is what? I've heard some of the, the scholars say this. and it's a, I don't know. It's a little bit controversial, but some of them say that if, if a person can't do this, then they can have a dedicated part of their house. Yes. It's secluded, exactly. enclosed. No one can bother you. you close the door and you just do some your 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 intention for the craft there. Yes. And so this is only this is uh, extreme used, cases. Yeah, this is used for cases in which someone mm -hmm. cannot do itikaf in the masjid, mm -hmm. and this is a very common one. This is a very good advice. Both of these are extremely mm -hmm. important. So you try to do itikaf with your best intention, and Allah Subhanahu wa Taala knows your intention. Mm -hmm. And again, even if it's just for a few hours in the masjid between the salawat or whatever it may mm -hmm. be, and then try to even have a place at home where it's secluded, where you're not using it for other things, but only for itikaf, only for itikaf. And you stay there and try not to leave unless there's an urgent reason. For example, someone has to go to the restroom or the bathroom. This is an urgent reason. Mm -hmm. But ultimately, try to do whatever you can. Fear Allah as much as you can. Mm. The next point is that some sisters will ask, um, what, are they what are they able to do in these last 10 nights if they cannot pray? So if they're on their cycles, what can they do in these 10 nights to receive mm -hmm. the reward of Laylatul Qadr? So we know according to the most correct opinion, this is the opinion that I follow, and there's ikhtilaf, there's difference of opinion, is that women who are on their cycles are allowed to recite Qur'an but they're not allowed to touch the Mus'haf. So they're allowed to recite Qur'an, especially from memory, if, if they don't want to forget what they memorize, mm -hmm. because there is no clear prohibition on it. And so even in the last 10 nights, many scholars will say, if you cannot pray, at least read Qur'an. And the second thing is make a lot of dua. Yes. Make a lot of dua. If you want to access Laylatul Qadr Qadr and you cannot pray, make dua on that night. Read Qur'an on that night. Allah knows your situation again. It goes back to our intentions. And the third thing is make a lot of istighfar. Mm. A lot of dhikr, subhanAllah, alhamdulillah, la ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar. And a lot of istighfar. So these three primary things, if you're doing these things, inshaAllah ta'ala, you will have the, the reward of Laylatul Qadr, if, even if you cannot pray on that night. Now what is the dua? What is the dua that everyone knows we should be saying, especially in the last 10 nights? Allahumma inna ka'afuun, kareemun, tuhibbu, afafafafafafafafafafafafafafafafafafafafafafafafafafafafafafafafafafafafafafafafafafafafafafafafafafafafafafafafafafafafafafafafafafafafafafafafafafafafafafafafafafafafafafafafafafafafafafafafafafafaf
I personally this year inshallah ta'ala will be posting, you know, I had scheduled in advance a different charity or different cause online like on Facebook for people to see so they can donate to a different cause every night. Just as a reminder. And I highly advise people to, you know, motivate their family and their friends to do this as well, to give reminders to donate for the sake of Allah. Action item number four. Prepare a dua list, some, you know, core duas that you want to do consistently and then general dua as well. You always have to have general du'a, mm-hmm. and you want to make core du'a that you want to ask Allah, especially in the last thirds of the night, on every single night. Action item number five is cut yourself off from useless things, gatherings, social gatherings that will waste your time. Uh, if you waste time with social media and you're not using it for good, cut yourself off from that. Cut yourself off from anything that will waste your time. Wallahi, there is nothing like the time of these ten nights. This is the moment to really boost yourself forward. Action item number six is that on the night when the decree is sent down, ask yourself, do I want to be sleeping extra hours that I can be sleeping later in the day or decreasing them at the very least? Do I want to be watching shows and movies? Do I want to be playing with friends or talking to family, just gossiping or something? Or do I want to be worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as best as possible? So take advantage on the most important night. Number seven, if you're busy with work, you have work, some people work, right? And mm-hmm. we, they cannot help but have to work. Mm-hmm. My advice is make as much dua during the daytime, during mm-hmm. your work. Make a lot of istighfar and dhikr as you're working. Even at work, protect yourself from falling into sins. And after work or sometime during it, try to take a nap so that at night you can wake up before Fajr. Because even if you have work and you really want to, Allah will make it easy for you to wake up at least an hour before Fajr and pray some, some uh, tahajjud. And make some dua, recite some Quran. I highly recommend our brothers and sisters who are working around the world and they want to take advantage of the last 10 nights to wake up at least an hour before Fajr, if not more. And so Dawood salam, you know, he would sleep and he would wake up and then he would sleep. So take advantage by waking up before Fajr. This is vital. Number eight, we want to mention for the mothers who are very busy. Remember that Allah is rewarding you. Remember that Allah is rewarding you based on your situation, based on your intention, based on your efforts. One thing that some people do is while they're taking care of their family, their work, is they're always making dua. Their tongue is ripe and moist with the remembrance of Allah. And as they're doing things, they try to schedule things you know, wisely. So some mothers, for example, they gave the advice, actually today, they gave the advice to the other mothers, which is in Ramadan, the last 10 nights, they would change the sleep schedule of their children so that the mother can have like an hour or two hours in the last part of the night to pray. And they might have to decrease their sleep, but this is the last 10 nights. We have to really struggle and take advantage of them. And may Allah bless us based on our efforts. And the last thing, number nine, is motivate everyone around you to do good in this month. When people come to you and they say, come hang out with us, come waste time with us, come you know, eat for a few hours of suhoor. You don't need suhoor for a few hours. Come do this, come do that. Tell them, listen, this is the last 10 nights. There's, there's no guarantee we're going to make it to the next 10 nights. Yeah. So let's take advantage of these last 10 nights. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mm-hmm. to allow us to be of those who are standing on Laylatul Qadr and worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in prayer and in humility and seeking forgiveness from Him. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless our brothers and sisters around the world, those who are watching, those who watch later. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to be of those who observe the last 10 nights wisely. And we take something from these 10 nights for the rest of the year. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless our guests today. Jazakumullah khairan for your time and your effort. The people that you see on the screen and the people that are working behind the scenes, make dua for them and make dua for the Muslims all around the world, especially in these 10 nights. We will see you in a future episode, inshallah ta'ala. We have a few more live shows and after that we are done, inshallah ta'ala. Jazakumullah khairan. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.